Hi guys, welcome to part one of the KP9 Vityaz clone. Uh, this is going to be the parts build. Uh, so this is going to be all the parts that I ordered from Russia and the US. So this is the first order I got from Ivan Tactical, which was actually in Russia, which was super cool. I had never got anything international before. Everything was really well packaged. Delivery time was really good. I was actually pretty impressed, but we'll talk about the individual components. This is the B-22 rail. I wanted something to mount my aim point on that was going to be a little bit elevated because I do shoot with night vision and the B-22 I feel like will be perfect. The RP-2 actually was an aesthetic choice for me, but it actually happens to be one of the best upgrades to the rifle just in function. This box is actually from the United States from akstuff.com. But they are a Zenico dealer. They are actually the only Zenico dealer in America, which is super cool. The shipping time was a little bit long, but it was nothing to worry about. I knew that I was going to be in good hands and their products are awesome. The B19 rail is actually going over the gas tube or where the gas tube would be. You could mount lasers or any aim points to it, uh, but I really didn't want to because I wanted it higher, but it's going to be on the rifle. The 21U is the underside of the rail, which is going to be the forend. It does have a Picatinny on the underside and it's smooth on the other sides, which is actually pretty nice. It has a slim fit. The PT3 is actually a really iconic stock. I know a lot of people are more familiar with the PT1. I wanted something a little bit different and I saw a lot of pictures with the Vityaz or Saiga 9 with this stock and I thought I'd give it a try. It does have an adjustable comb, which is nice, which I will be using for sure. To start the build off, I wanted to go ahead and take apart the KP9. It already has been disassembled a little bit, but really all it comes with is just the plastic forend um, and the gas tube cover. I took out the muzzle device, but it does not come with a stock. The first thing you need to do is take apart the bolt and the uh, guide rod assembly. So taking that out and the bolt comes right out. This is actually my first AK I've ever owned, so forgive me if I'm a little clumsy when handling it, um, but the KP9 is actually a really good gun to learn about the AK. I was actually tempted to cut this part out, but I wanted to include it because I think it's important. The pin on the hinge on the KP9 it was giving me so many problems. Uh, I actually had to call uh, Kalashnikov USA customer service to ask them how I'm going to take this out. I was really hoping I wasn't going to have to send in the gun. Um, I was actually able to get it out, but with the help of customer service, which they actually helped me a lot. They were very friendly. Um, they were really good guys. So as you can see, I learned to take off the pistol grip, uh, which was very helpful in removing the pin. Also, the biggest thing I learned to take off the pin is to just soak it in oil. I actually soaked it in CLP and then just used a punch and I eventually was able to remove the pen. It is a five and a half millimeter pen, which is pretty much standard on all AKs, um, but it is five and a half, which will be mating up with the PT3 stock. So this little plate actually is to use to uh, stow the stock. Um, it actually has a spring that is sort of putting tension on the stock when you fold it. Um, you can see it in another shot here in a second. Overall, the stock was a pretty easy install once I got the pin in. Um, I don't have it on camera, but you can see the pin goes in the side of the stock and then mates up with the little tab on the stock. This is a little spring-loaded tension piece that I was talking to you about um, that will latch the stock. So this is the RP2, so you can see that the two pieces sort of like clamshell together and then stick inside of the charging handle cover. So you can see they're just a little bit different and it's because they made up with the curve of the charging handle on the AK. So you can kind of play around with it, but you can see that one side is more flat and the other side is curved and that corresponds to the front and the back. So 
So once I got those two pieces clamshell together, I sort of just slid it and kind of played with it until it would go around. And it actually corresponds with the screw holes on the side. Um, the text goes up, you can go by the text, but I just kind of lined up the screw holes. Something that I did a lot on this build is I used Loctite because I just did not want anything to come out because I didn't know if I would be able to replace any weird, you know, threads or any, any sort of screws. So I use a lot of Loctite on this build and you can kind of see that throughout. Um, but yeah, I put a little blue Loctite on each one and it was secured. So now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the bolt. You can see that the KP9 doesn't have a gas tube. It is just straight blowback. So you just slide that in and then the guide rod and spring goes in. Like I said, that was just a very functional upgrade. Um, it really is nice to have a big handle to grab onto to charge the weapon. So installing the rail actually is pretty simple because there's a little slot in the receiver that the tab goes into and you sort of have to uh, beat it in place, which I actually watched a lot of Zenit Co um, YouTube videos, which are very instructional, which I'll link in the description if you have a Zenit Co rail. Um, but basically they say that, you know, they don't really require filing or fitting or anything like that. The metal on the rail is actually kind of soft and you can sort of beat it in place and then it sort of holds down. Um, I think that they use this technique. This is a technique I saw in one of their videos, just using a flat piece in the receiver. Um, but it actually goes in nicely once you get it in place. It does have somewhat of a gap in the receiver, but it's actually a very solid rail. It doesn't really wobble at all. So the top cover, uh, which covers around the gas tube, this is something I wanted to address. Um, I had no idea how to get out the gas tube cover from the original KP9 furniture set. I eventually did get it, which will be in part two, uh, but just know that I am missing the gas tube cover in this video. This is the B22, which is going to be supporting my aim point. Um, it's actually really nice because it goes over the front, uh, front sight and it doesn't really interfere with anything. Um, and it also mates with the lower rail, which is kind of cool. I'm not exactly sure the height over bore uh, that the mount has, but it feels very similar to my skyscraper on my SR-15. Once again, you can see that I use a lot of Loctite. I really did not want to lose any screws. Um, it looks kind of sloppy now. I do eventually go back and clean it up with a paper towel. Uh, but just so you know, if you are OCD, you might want to fast forward because there's a little bit of Loctite that gets on the rail. So after tightening them down, I went ahead and cleaned them up a little bit, uh, but really this is an AK. You're supposed to throw it around and stuff. I'm not too worried about it. So this is actually going to be hosting my Omega 9K, which is actually just gonna direct thread onto the KP9. And it actually mates up pretty well with the retaining, um, the retaining button on the KP9. Um, and I haven't noticed it getting loose at all. Now that they have that done, I'm really happy with the aesthetic of the KP9. Um, since it came as a pistol, I am really happy to have it SBR'd and have a stock on it. It is much more functional um, and it is just a really fun shooting gun. So like I said, this is the missing gas tube cover, uh, which holds the you know reciprocating bolt. I will have that in part two, so just don't get too upset. Just know that that is there. So this is the folding part on the PT3 which uh, it does actually have some sort of retention. I do need to fit it a little bit to where it gives more of a positive retention. But you can see if you flip it over, it does have some level of retention on the stock, which is pretty cool.
So I've had the KP9 for some time, but I really wanted to take my time and get the appropriate parts to show you guys what the KP9 looks like with Russian parts. I really think they go really well together, makes it both a functional and a very aesthetically pleasing rifle. Um, without going too much into the shooting aspects of the gun, it is insanely fun and I can't wait to show you guys how it shoots and talk about my impressions of the gun. So I hope you stick around. See you next time.